welcome to the house. To the house of Ga Ga. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth and I am very excited to film today's video because I'm finally going to be, I guess, dipping my toes into the House Labs brand by Lady Gaga. And I know this brand isn't new, uh, but I haven't really tried, I guess, many of her products. Uh, so I've had this video in mind for a while. I actually picked up a lot of, if not most of these products during the past spring VIB sale at Sephora. Uh, but the impetus for filming this video now is that I wanted to show you the discovery set that she recently released for her foundation. So we'll talk about the foundation in greater depth in a moment and I'll have timestamps down below and everything. Uh, but since this is a new, it's not really a new release, I guess a new feature that you can uh, try out, I just wanted to go ahead and film this. So I have this set in fair, uh, which has three different shades. I'll talk about that more. Uh, I also have the shade 15 fair warm, which I purchased back in the spring. Uh, and this isn't one of the shades that's featured in this set. So I felt good, I guess, about trying out some additional shades. Uh, so I got that. And then I also got her bio blurring loose setting powder her bronzer in light level one. Uh, I got her blush in Hibiscus Haze, uh, which has since I think left the Sephora website, which is really odd, but it's still on the House Labs website. Uh, I also have two of her highlighters. So I have the shades Rose Quartz and Pink Amethyst. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about why I chose the shades I did later in the video. Uh, and then I do have these minis that she launched not too long ago of her lip oil. So the two shades in the mini form are the clear or neutral and the pink tint, which is like a pH kind of shade. So since I mentioned it, I think I'll go ahead and apply this to keep the lips nice and hydrated. So that's what it looks like. Very small, but I think effective. It's, ooh. Took a little bit of strength to get that out. I think it's definitely on the thinner side in terms of lip oils. And again, that's just a clear shade. So if you like a thin lip oil, it's not bad, but I think I prefer something a little bit thicker and more cushiony. And because I don't have everything from the current House Labs brand, and she doesn't really have, I guess, a full face for me anyway, uh, I pulled out the first iteration of her brand, House Laboratories. Uh, you can still find quite a few pieces from her collection on Amazon, uh, but I think I got these in subscription boxes. So I have this eyeshadow palette that I thought I would include in the look. And then I also have a, I think, eye product. It says all over liquid shimmer powder. And that's in the shade Charmed Ballerina. I think this is, oh no, that's black. Okay, so I don't know if I'll be using that or not. <laughs> I guess I could use it to kind of recreate her uh, Oscars look, but anyway. Uh, and then there is a kind of shimmery red lipstick. So, so I might try this on with the pink lip oil later in the video, but uh, I just wanted to kind of show you what I have um, to compare everything to. And you can still find a lot of the like blushes and that kind of thing that she released under her initial launch, but I wanted to kind of focus on her current lineup of products and especially focus on the ones that are popular. So let's talk about this Triclone Skin Tech Foundation Discovery Set. This is in the shade Fair. Uh, you get 3.10 fluid ounce or three mil bottles. So it's about a third of a full bottle, I think. Yeah, this is 30 mil or one fluid ounce. So about a third. And uh, it has the shades on the top here. So uh, the deal with this is you can purchase this from the House Labs website. You can't throw it into another order. I think you just have to purchase it by itself, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, that's that's a little weird to me, but basically you pay for shipping. I think it's like $6 or something. And then if you purchase a full-size foundation within, I think, 21 days, you don't have to pay for this set. You would have just paid for shipping. Uh, but if you don't purchase a full-size foundation, which I think retails for $45, uh, then they will charge you like $12 for this set. So taking into account the price of a full-size foundation, I don't think $12 is a terrible deal. And I know some people were saying, well, you can just go into Sephora and get samples, but you may not live close to a Sephora or you may not live close to a Sephora that carries house labs. So there's that. It does make it a little bit more accessible that way. So even though it may be more expensive than just getting free samples at Sephora, assuming that's an option for you, 
you have the, I guess, waste factor of returning a foundation that didn't work out. So at least this way you get to try it for less money. And if you're anything like me, I have a tendency, I didn't do it with that one, but I have a tendency to buy multiple shades and then I never return the ones that aren't ideal. So I can see why this may not be the best option for everyone, but I think I think it's a good option to have. And these bottles are, are really cute. I don't know exactly how much comes in a, are these glass? These might be frosted glass bottles even. So just by way of comparison, I think this is like the Sephora sample size. I don't know that this tells you the relative volumes or whatever, but uh, you're kind of at the mercy of, I guess, whoever is making the sample for you at Sephora. And some of the Sephora's around me are weird in that they won't do samples. They say it's like a COVID policy uh, and some do. So I really, I really don't know. Uh, but anyway, you get this little kind of cardboard box with the three uh, bottles. It comes with a, I thought for a minute that this was a sticker, which I don't hate. I'm just not really sure what, yeah, it is a sticker. Let's see, I can pull it apart. It's not really that sticky though. That's weird. I don't really understand what the point of that is, but yeah, and it's not even like it's transparent, so I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, so it comes with the shade range. So 000 is the lightest shade. It's basically pure white. Uh, the 015 is the one I purchased initially, and then these are the three that come in this kit. So there are two in the fair range, 060 and 070, which are not included, and I don't have uh, the ability to swatch. Uh, so it comes with that, and then it also comes with this little card that says, uh, scan the QR code of your ideal shade to purchase the full-size bottle for $45 plus tax. And it says if you don't find your ideal match, you scan this code and I guess they can help you out. Uh, so the three shades again are, so going from your left to right maybe. Uh, so this is 050 Fair Cool. It's very fair with golden peach undertones. And I, I've heard people say that this foundation is kind of notoriously hard to find a shade in that works for you. I mean, it's viral, so there's a lot of people out there that love it. but. I think there was understandably a lot of confusion when this product first launched because they kind of adopted the like MAC naming convention where cool shades are actually warm in most foundations and vice versa. So I'm pretty neutral leaning a little bit cool. And I think the 015 shade that I showed you is fair warm. So their, their philosophy has something to do with like adding what your skin doesn't have to kind of neutralize things. I'm not really sure, but anyway. Uh, so we have 050 Fair Cool, 040 Fair Neutral, and that is very fair with soft porcelain undertones. And then we have 030 Fair Cool, which is ultra fair porcelain with golden porcelain undertones. And I did swatch the triple zero shade in the store once, and it is, it is pretty, pretty darn white. So it says step one, swatch all three shade samples going downwards from your cheek to jawline. Be sure to leave space between each swatch. And then it says, use a mirror in a well-lit area to see which shade is the best match. For additional shade options, use the shade finder tool on the other side of the face, placing it from cheek to jawline to find the best match. So they just want you to kind of do that, I guess. I don't know. And then three buy, purchase your full size foundation within 21 days of your discovery set order. Otherwise you will be charged $12 plus tax for the discovery set at the end of your trial period. Uh, be sure to use the same email address for both purchases so we know it's you. I can imagine that could be like a administrative um, headache. Yeah, so like I said, I had a little bit of trouble finding, I think a good shade match. Uh, I did swatch all of these shades that I'm about to show you in natural light. I just uploaded a reel to Instagram. So you can let me know either on this video or on that Instagram reel, uh, which one you think is the best match. And I still can't get over the bottle and how much it looks like one of those uh, like 18th century French court dresses. Um, that kind of cracks me up. Uh, it does have this little kind of slant too, which I always in my head think of as something that I need to press to get the product out. Um, but the cap does come off like so. Uh, so I'm just going to, I think, dispense a little bit on my hand. So I don't wanna kind of apply an uneven amount. And I have studio lights on, it's still daylight out, but I have the um, kind of the blinds shut. 
So that is 15. So it's light for sure, but I have a feeling it's still gonna be the best shade. My face is red in certain areas, but I have a feeling that's gonna be the best shade match. Okay, so that's the one I purchased in the full size, and then I'm gonna go in reverse order here. So this is 13 Fair Cool. This one is kind of straight yellow from what I recall. So there's, was it 30? Yeah, and I looked at the, I just lost the cap to this. I looked at the pictures of the models too to try and get the best, best read. Okay, so that was, 30 and then next up we have 40 fair neutral and the advantage of having again these small sizes is that to the extent you need to tinker with your shade a little bit to kind of get your ideal match it allows you to do that this is the last one what do you guys think like I feel the tone of this one is the best the undertone but then this one is maybe the right depth so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and go with, I think the one I purchased the full size in. Let me go ask my husband. Okay, so uh, my husband said probably the first one, but he didn't think any of them were particularly good. So there is that. Um, I think I will go with the lightest one in part just because I wanna see if, I guess the shade I initially chose works. Uh, out of curiosity and I think my preference in general is just to have I guess a foundation that matches my neck as closely as possible and then uh, to the extent I need to add bronzer or anything like that I will okay so I'm gonna start off with this make reverse emulsion uh, I was kind of debating what kind of base primer I wanted to use I did my skincare kind of a while ago and I didn't apply sunscreen because I've just been at home and I don't really plan on going out so so I do have dry skin so I would definitely rather err on the side of added hydration uh, okay so there's that and then I'm just gonna kind of go in with a standby this is the Charlotte Tilbury corrector Lady Gaga hasn't released a concealer yet I would be surprised if they're not working on one though given how popular this foundation has been so uh, that is the corrector and let's go ahead and go in with this foundation so uh, they do sell a brush for this foundation so I guess that would be their kind of recommended uh, application method uh, I guess I'll try applying it with a brush I just put like that much on my hand uh, I'll start off with a brush and then see how we go. And because this is definitely on the lighter side, I don't want to kind of go in too heavy with it. This is supposed to be on the more natural side. And I remember Hannah Louise Poston, who is, I think, fairer than me even. She's a little bit more olive. I think she talked about using that triple zero shade. I think it does blend in well with the brush okay so that is half the face applied so we'll have to see how it looks when I get the rest of my face on like for now I feel like it's maybe with skin tints I do need to go darker because if something I mean it's tough like the more high coverage something is the better shade match you need to have ideally but like with kind of these skin tint type products they're just kind of I guess almost applying a filter in a way so it's not canceling out all the redness and everything I think my ears even look like look at my hand like I am I am fair for sure so maybe I need to try this again this foundation but try mixing in some of the other shade and it does, it does kind of dry down. Maybe I'll try some of this fair neutral and just kind of see what happens if I apply some of this, especially like around the perimeters, I guess. Do you see how it's just, it still, it looks a little peach. And it's supposed to be fair neutral. Yeah, I don't know, maybe it is matching my base color. I haven't, I haven't really decided whether I'm going to purchase another shade or not, or if I'll just, I don't know. Pay the $12 uh, so we'll see about that 
Uh, let's see, so I'm just gonna put something quick in my brows. I guess I'll take the Benefit Gimme brow. And then for concealer, as I mentioned, uh, she hasn't released one yet, but uh, I did just pick up, this is the older Makeup uh, Forever HD concealer uh, because they are reformulating this like they are everything else these days. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of refresh my memory of uh, this product. So I got the shade 10. I think this is the lightest neutral shade, if I'm not mistaken. And if there's any time to try out a light concealer, it's probably now. So yeah, I just want to kind of refresh my memory. Probably not the best idea to try a concealer with a new setting powder, but so. I know I tried this product years ago, but the one I had, I think it was like four years old, so I didn't really feel like I should be messing around with that at this point. I don't remember what I thought, but this one is looking pretty good. So I do plan to do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of the old and the new uh, concealers when that comes out. And there's a little bit of lip oil on, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit. So I don't know what the full size container is like, but this, I don't know, it just feels a little, a little dinky, a little hard to get the applicator in and out. So not, not ideal. So I think to bring a little bit of kind of dimension and structure back to the face, I'm going to do some contouring. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and use this Milk uh, Toasted Sculpt Stick. I kind of want to get that Victoria Beckham contour uh, that she released just for my nose, um, but that's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? All right, and then using a BK brush. And then let's try the powder. So I've heard good things about this. This is the Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder. It's in the shade Translucent. I think this only comes in five different shades. It's kind of surprising what they have like a lot of shades in and what they just have a few in. Uh, like I think they have, I don't know, like 12 bronzer shades or something that we'll talk about in a moment. So yeah, this comes in five shades. This one is supposed to be neutral with balanced undertones. And it has the same kind of slant, not as confusing. And then it has like a mesh kind of stopper. I don't recall if I open this and remove some kind of sticker or if this is just the way it's always been. Uh, so it does have a kind of feature in the lid that comes down but I'm just going to try to pick up a little bit and tap off the excess. Loose powder is not my favorite generally. I will say this concealer is not doing a bad job in terms of not creasing. I feel like, I feel like that's gonna be too much. Okay, so that's under the eyes. I think this eye got maybe a little bit more powder, just a tad. All right, and then I'm gonna take a bigger brush I kind of like using this one for uh, powder, actually. This is the BK103, and see what happens. I mean, I feel like you still kind of get a lot on your brush. So I guess I'll just try to powder like half of the face. So it doesn't look super powdery or anything, but it's definitely a little bit more mattified. So it's a good size for this pan, actually. And I'm just kind of tapping on the, the mesh. So I like that. I'm gonna grab the other, again, we are in kind of the dead of summer and I turn off my air conditioning to film. So if there's ever going to be a good time to try powders on dry skin, it's kind of like right now. But yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this with some other uh, products is kind of where I am now. I think it's a little bit maybe more forgiving than the like hourglass powder. Um, so that's that's interesting. Uh, but let's add some more warmth to the face. So I got the bronzer in the shade light level one. Uh, so this retails for $38 and it comes in 12 shades. Uh, and this light level one is for fair to fair light warm muted undertones. I'm not sure if the cool versus warm thing still applies to their bronzer. It's very confusing. Uh, but yeah, this is the lightest one. They have light level two, 
which is fair to fair light cool golden and whenever something has like yellow golden undertones i think of it as being kind of a warmer shade warmer product uh, so hopefully this is going to be the best one i think someone commented on one of my videos that they like the light level two and now i don't know if i'm just kind of getting used to how my face is looking but it's not looking quite as ghostly as it did before uh, which is interesting but anyway that is the compact i kind of wish they just kept the kind of metallic finish over the entire compact i think maybe it would have been a little bit more sophisticated that way this looks a little bit cheap i mean it's not going to get fingerprints and everything but anyway uh, so this is the Rapper 22 brush this is my favorite bronzer brush and i like to kind of start by tapping around the forehead and then i'll kind of take it down onto the cheek not not a bad shade really i mean when something is muted it's generally going to be better for me so i'm always on the hunt for kind of rosy toned bronzers like the gucci which is kind of my go-to and ironically because i think if you do the like color theory um i forget what the actual term is but where they say what season you are uh, i think i'm a soft summer uh, which always kind of cracked me up because i think of summer colors as being kind of very warm and vibrant but the powers that be i guess decided that that would be that they would be more soft and muted for that color family yeah but anyway muted muted colors is definitely kind of where i'm supposed to go and the fact that they call that a muted undertone is probably a good thing okay so the blush so this blush was definitely a hot ticket during the sephora sale i think i had to get it delivered or something it was kind of a big thing uh, but this is the shade hibiscus haze and for whatever reason on the sephora website it says that it is that the whole blush lineup or whatever is limited edition and i think they have four shades on sephora but they have two additional shades on the house labs website uh, so they have this shade which is hibiscus haze and then i think the acai shade whatever it is uh, but yeah this is the component very bright and silver i think all of the blushes are the same i'm not sure if all the bronzers are in the same outer packaging uh, but at least there's a sticker that kind of gives you an idea of what the shade is going to be uh, and this does have that uh, consistent packaging which as you can tell is reflective and has fingerprints so anyway but yeah these are all kind of the same the same but different which is kind of nice i guess from a brand uniformity uh, perspective but it's not like patrick ta where everything is that same rose gold and you can never tell what you're picking up uh, so that is the shade i went for the most neutral i guess option and this is the refer number five which is my favorite uh, and i've heard everyone say that these are kind of scary looking in the pan but they're very buildable which does seem to be the case here so i think that's pretty this is definitely a color i will be able to get a lot of use out of it looks very kind of natural i think on my skin tone complexion okay so that is very very nice i kind of see the idea behind I guess the packaging and the components but the bronzer is 12 grams and the blush is 11 grams and i think for the price i think a lot of people would have been happy with a smaller um, with less product for a lower cost especially since i think you're more inclined to shake up your your blush shade as opposed to your bronzer like you're probably you probably have fewer bronzers in your collection is my guess okay so i have two shades of the highlighter and they both I think have the same packaging they're kind of holographic so it's a little hard to tell i mean they look different but i don't know if that would be because of the shade difference uh this is pink amethyst and this is rose quartz and these retail for 40 dollars each so again i don't know how many people are probably going to be using up that much highlighter um this one is pink amethyst you can see there 
and this one is rose quartz which is like so uh, i just saw abby young swatch this one next to i think the french rose blush from rms i'm planning an rms video so i have these close at hand um so this is marketed more as a blush i forget how much these were they keep going on sale i'm wondering if sephora is going to be just getting rid of rms altogether so that is french rosé you see french rosé is more vibrant but kind of similar finish actually so the reason i got these two shades in particular is i have it in mind to do a pantone color of the year video for 2023 i, I know i uploaded one last year when it was like that periwinkle shade and I filmed a Pantone color of the year video uh, sometime earlier this year, but um, I decided for reasons that I'll go into in a different video, I think one of my brushes is shutting, uh, that uh, I wanted to refilm it. So I decided to pick up these two shades that have some kind of magenta um, color to them. And of course I already removed this swatch, but this one is Rose Quartz, this is a light magenta, according to House Labs. And this other one is Pink Amethyst, and this is a magenta pink. Probably not what I would go for in either case, but let's see if I can use a light hand. The, the highlighters all look kind of strange, to be honest. Start off by using this um, ABH um, A23 brush and just kind of lightly I guess use that as a blush topper. And I think Teresa's dad really likes the like silver shade, which again looks a little scary. All right, so that that is some beaming highlighter right there. That is the pink amethyst, just kind of blending down. Yeah, not not what I would typically kind of go for probably. Yeah, and my skin is starting to feel just like a little dry, like I want to use setting spray. Uh, so. Have I used everything? I think I have from this new launch anyway. So I'm going to apply, I guess I'll apply this pink lip oil. I'm just really curious to see what color it's going to turn on me. Again, same same packaging, I think. Okay, so yeah, definitely definitely giving more of that color. And they, they have other shades in the full size. I don't know if the full size shades are all supposed to be pH adjusting. I mean, I like that color, I think it's pretty. Okay, so I'll swatch that Glam Attack, I think it's called. Ooh, wow. That is black. I don't know if I wanna go that route. I'm not the biggest liquid eyeshadow person, but that, that definitely makes a statement. I know House Labs has also, I think, released some like eye pencils that come in some fun colors. Actually, let's just take a quick look at what I haven't picked up. So they have their lip pencils. Uh, they're high power eye, cheek, and lip pigment paints. Uh, so you can use those in a variety of different ways. Uh, they're liquid lipsticks. Uh, they have some eyeliner pencils, an eyebrow pencil, and then the brush for the foundation. Yeah, I didn't, I guess, feel compelled to pick up any of those products because I kind of wanted to focus on, again, what has been the most popular so far and also the types of products that I tend to gravitate towards. Uh, so I'm going to start off with the eyes by applying some eyeshadow primer. I really like this one from Ulta, actually. It's kind of a neutralizing base, like it has a little bit of pigment to it. Uh, and this palette has that kind of interesting kind of dome to it. So this primer, it doesn't do too much to kind of affect the, the way the color reads on the lid, but it does help to kind of neutralize so I think I've used this palette before. I think I did like a unboxing of an Ipsy or whatever. Uh, and I don't think I was too impressed with the quality, but um, it does have some nice shades that I like to reach for. So I'm gonna use that cream shade to go all over the lid. See, it has a good amount of pigment really. So I just like to kind of provide a nice base that's primed and set. Okay, so I'm gonna take a Sonia G, uh, what is this, mini booster, and go into this brown shade. And this is kind of just my test to see how the shadows are showing up before I go in with a bigger brush. So that one, I think I'm also going to take underneath the lower lashes on this little 
flat definer and I do this in part to prevent the concealer from creasing but I think concealer is actually doing pretty well. I know it looks a little weird at the moment so I'm going to go in with uh, this classic crease brush same shade just building up a little bit so yeah these shadows aren't bad I mean I guess this palette didn't blow my socks off but the mattes so far are good uh, using that brown with the mini booster again and then taking the classic crease without any more product and just blending maybe taking a little bit of that kind of light beige color especially under the brow okay so once I get that mostly even uh what do we want to do I think maybe that magenta shade kind of matches the look we've already created uh, so I'm just going to take a dry dirty uh, rougher 28 and see what happens on the outer lid here it's not terrible pigmentation for a dry shadow going onto a dry base all right so I'll amp up that pigment in a moment I tend to take like the end of the brush and hold it that way so I can kind of in a way extend my eye because I've hooded lids so I find that taking the shimmery shades above the crease kind of opens up the eye a little bit gives the illusion of bigger eyes all right so I think I'm gonna have to blend that a little bit but I'm just going to take the other side of that brush and go into this light shimmery shade which doesn't do a whole lot really I think just more of an inner corner highlight than anything kind of crazy so taking some fix plus in that same brush get it wet and then just tapping off any excess moisture and going into that cranberry pink shade again it's yeah it's not it's not playing well it's kind of like flaking up I don't know exactly when I got this palette, but it wasn't like years and years ago. Oh, there's some fallout. Maybe not the worst palette I've ever used, but certainly not the best. And just for fun, I'm gonna take some of that gold on my finger. See how that does. Yeah, so I don't I don't think anyone's going to be missing this palette now that this has been discontinued. Um, but I think you can still get it on Amazon if you just wanted to I don't know, pick it up as a piece of makeup history, that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm going to hop off camera and do some liner and mascara, and then I'll be back to uh, show you this kind of crazy looking lipstick. I'm gonna set my face though, actually. So liner and mascara is on. Uh, I used the Victoria Beckham liner in Cocoa, I think it is. Uh, the Tarte Lights Camera Splashes, the uh, Clinique bottom lash and is that everything I think I did um, yeah uh, so let's go ahead and talk about this lipstick before I kind of wrap this video up so uh, this is interesting it has kind of like a, a circus kind of stripe looking packaging on the outside but I think the actual lipstick is all metallic I think this lip oil kind of stains a bit so uh, there's that okay so I'm just gonna apply this straight from the bullet I mean if you want a metallic red <laughs> I think it has like a vanilla scent I think that's good enough for now uh, yeah I'd probably go in with like a lip liner and a lip brush if I really wanted to perfect the shape and I don't think it goes with this look all that well but you can feel a little bit of grittiness but it's not bad and this isn't really my preferred finish of lipstick I'd probably only break this out for like a holiday party kind of thing I think it makes my teeth decently white so yeah so not not bad for what it is just not something I tend to reach for and I remember when this iteration of house labs or house laboratories came out I think that was one of the chief things people were saying is just that Lady Gaga is known for being so like avant-garde and edgy and a lot of the makeup fell short of that or at least of what people expected so I guess you can't, you can't make everyone happy. I'm trying to figure out how I can remove this. I think this is really only supposed to be used for the eyes, but 
Glitter truly is the herpes of the makeup world, isn't it? So let's clean that up a little bit and then I'll reapply the lip oil. I have some redness around my mouth and skin likes to get eczema there for some reason. And the lip oil, again, I like the color, but I just wish the actual lip oil would hang around a little bit more. And this isn't a totally unique product on the market, but maybe if you have a really tiny clutch or something and you wanna put a lip oil in, maybe this would be um, preferable to, like this is the KAB one that I got in a BoxyCharm or something. And there's this one from Essence that I think is kind of a similar idea as well. So it is what it is. Okay, so let me let me give you kind of the roundup here. So I guess the only products from this video that I am interested in trying again are the powder and the concealer and the blush. I will try the highlighters again, like I said, for that other video, but those aren't, I guess, the types of colors or textures that I routinely reach for give you a good, good close-up. Because as you can tell from how I doused my face in Fix Plus, it does feel a little kind of dry at the moment. So if you are very dry like I am and very fair, I think the shade options, at least at the fair end of the spectrum, are a little difficult to navigate. Uh, I think once I have the whole makeup applied, it doesn't look too bad. So I guess everything kind of worked out in the end with regards to the shade uh, that I had originally purchased, I think. But yeah, if you are very fair and looking for a good foundation, if we're shade twins, uh, I really enjoy the Revlon Skin Caring Foundation. I think I would definitely recommend this over the House Labs, and this is probably like a fourth of the price. Um, I have it in the shade 109 Light Ivory. So I would much prefer to wear this, I think, in the future. But I do, I do like the idea of the foundation sampler, and I can see how if you have a different skin type, you might really enjoy uh, that foundation. Uh, I heard, I think, Jamie Page say that the House Labs is like a less dewy version of the Makeup by Mario foundation, and I think that little sample I held up earlier was the Makeup by Mario foundation. I just, I haven't purchased a full size and I haven't quite, I guess, formed my opinion about that uh, particular product. Uh, the lip oils were fine. I don't think you need to get one from House Labs, especially the minis. I think we're just kind of, I mean, they're only $14 a piece versus 24. So maybe if you just want to try it out before investing in the larger one, you can do that. But I think lip oils are everywhere right now. So I wouldn't rush out to try it. Uh, the powder was nice. And this is coming from someone who doesn't really like loose powder. I'm not sure that this kind of packaging is my all time favorite, but uh, I think the powder itself was nice, so I will be trying that again. Uh, and again, I have the shade Translucent. Uh, there were only five shades to choose from, so that made it a little bit easier. Uh, the bronzer, I think it's fine. Again, this kind of goes back to what I was saying about the foundation shades and the brand's approach to whether something is cool or warm in general is just a little confusing. I don't know, I'm glad I have it in my collection as a reference, but it's probably not going to be something I routinely reach for. Uh, the blush was really pretty, nice kind of neutral everyday shade I can get a lot of use out of, so I will be reaching for that. Uh, and the highlighters, again, not really my ideal kind of texture or color, but I picked those uh, specific shades for specific reasons. Uh, and of course, the eyeshadow, I don't know if you saw, I mentioned there was Fallout. Just in case you wanted to go hunting for some of their older products, um, I think, yeah, you can see like the fallout under this eye. So I think you could do a lot better with, I think it was like $24 on Amazon. I think you could do a lot better with like ColourPop, for example, than that eyeshadow. Uh, I'm not a big liquid eyeshadow person, um, so I can't really speak to that. And the color kind of intimidated me, so I skipped it. Uh, and the lipstick would be kind of a very specific situation where I would wear this. And even then, I don't know if it would be the one I would reach for. So anyway, those are my thoughts on House Labs, new and old. Uh, I hope you guys found this interesting or helpful uh, to have everything in one video from someone who hasn't tried the products before. Uh, let me know if you have any questions down below or if you have any favorites from this video that I kind of dumped on, let me know too. I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you soon. Bye.